This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about whether there's a Bitcoin 51% attack coming. This is something I've been getting a lot of questions about, especially after yesterday's video. So here's how you can launch a 51% attack on Bitcoin. What you basically need to do is you need to buy or build as many Bitcoin mining machines, which are also called ASICs, as you can. And so in doing so, you might be able to accumulate 51% or more of the total Bitcoin network hash rate. You have to have this powerful computer hash rate in order to do it, and you have to have the majority. Now, it's important to note here that not only is this extremely expensive, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars, but it's also quite difficult to do without people noticing, especially if you're a government and you're building a new secret chip fab facility to manufacture your own ASICs. If you're trying to just buy all the ASICs in the world, that's also a very slow process and word will get out. It's very difficult to do a large scale government operation without there being some leaks and people finding out. So what happens once you control 51% of the hash rate of the Bitcoin network, once your machines control that much of the hash rate, you will get to mine the next block 51% of the time on average. Everyone else, all the honest miners, will get to mine the next block approximately 49% of the time. And the way it works in Bitcoin is it's the heaviest, the longest, it's really the chain, the blockchain with the most accumulated proof of work that is accepted as the real one. And this is the only one that's accepted by Bitcoin nodes. So in a 51% attack, what happens is the attacker tries to keep his version of the blockchain, of the Bitcoin blockchain, going on for as long as possible. And in order to do this, he needs to keep producing new blocks faster than that 49% of honest miners. Doing this will enable two different possible kinds of attacks. The first one is what's called an empty block attack. In this kind of attack, every new block that the attacker produces is empty. That is, it doesn't contain any transactions where people are sending and receiving Bitcoin. Now this could be very annoying for people who wanna receive or send Bitcoin and it could prevent them from transacting on the chain for as long as the 51% attacker is, control, is in control. This is also sometimes called a, a DOS or DOS denial of service attack. This would be kind of the version of a DOS attack on Bitcoin where you mine these empty blocks and you make it such that no one can transact. Now, does this kind of attack steal anyone's Bitcoin? No, it does not. There's no transactions taking place, and so, uh, or there are no transactions being included in the latest block, and so no Bitcoin is changing hands. Now, how can the Bitcoin network fight back against a 51% empty block attack? First thing it can do is it can just stand there and wait for the attacker to give up or wait for enough new honest miners to enter and bring the honest hash rate back above 50%. Because at a certain point, the attacker, unless he or she has very, very deep po pockets in the case of maybe a nation state attacker, at a certain point, the attacker may no longer be able to afford the electricity or the machine replacement costs. Even if you're a government, you might, if your machines start breaking, you need to constantly uh, be building new machines. And so something may go wrong there. Something may go right though, in which case the Bitcoin network can actually fight back more actively by routing around this empty block version of the blockchain and focusing on the honest chain. It will be a shorter chain, but it will be the blockchain whose blocks actually contain transactions. Now this can easily be accomplished by rolling out a new version of Bitcoin Core that rejects the hostile blockchain. Bitcoin Core developers are not in charge of anything simply because they can make whatever software they want, but they do not have the power to persuade or to force full nodes to run their software. So they would have to produce a version of the software that, that a majority of the nodes, or not even a majority, that a lot of nodes would want to run. Bitcoin nodes, again, it's not a democracy. So this is the second way to fight back. You roll out this new version of Bitcoin Core that rejects the hostile blockchain, and then this new version of software will achieve wide use and consensus among the honest nodes and honest miners. At this point, the attacker will be just wasting electricity and mining empty blocks on a blockchain that no one cares about. And Bitcoiners and other people who love freedom are gonna just simply ignore this new government version of the blockchain, and economic activity will resume on the honest chain. And it's gonna be even better than that because everyone's gonna be laughing that a government or someone with deep pockets 
spent $20 billion trying to attack Bitcoin and failed to stop Bitcoin. What does this do? This just increases the perceived value of Bitcoin as being immune to large attackers and even nation state level attacks. And then even more people will want to store their wealth in it, which will mean the number will go up, Bitcoin security will get even better, and the Bitcoin network is strengthened and has been strengthened by this kind of 51% attack that was repulsed. If you attack Bitcoin and fail, you are basically running a free commercial for Bitcoin and for how powerful it is. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to click that subscribe button, maybe share this video with a few friends as well. So that's the first kind of attack you can do. You can do an empty block attack. That would be sort of a non-economically minded attack where you just want to mess up Bitcoin. You're not interested in profiting from it just because you're a big government. You don't really care about profiting from it. You just want to kill Bitcoin and you end up failing. What would be a more profit minded attack? That would be what's called a double spending attack. And in this case, the 51% attackers, they need to already own some Bitcoin. And the way they do it is they basically spend the Bitcoin and then try to rewrite the blockchain so that it looks like they haven't spent it and they still have it. So one way to do this is they would just send some of their Bitcoin to an exchange, quickly exchange it for dollars or euros or other fiat. And then the latest Bitcoin block, the honest block would contain this transaction, basically the attacker sending Bitcoin to the crypto exchange address, maybe sending it to Kraken or Coinbase. So what the, the attacker then does is basically because he or she controls 51% of the hash rate, they remine this latest block, they exclude that transaction, and that means that that transaction never put, took place. So now the attacker still owns that Bitcoin that he or she basically sent to Coinbase or Kraken and exchange for fiat, but the attacker still owns it, Coinbase or Kraken does not have that Bitcoin and they've already given fiat to the attacker. And so this is what a double spending attack looks like. In order to maintain this, the attacker needs to keep winning and building blocks on top of this fake block. And if the attacker only has 51% of the hash rate, this is gonna be a slow and difficult process because the honest miners are gonna be winning the next block about 49% of the time. So in order to keep this going, you need to maintain uh, the attack. So what happened here? The attacker spent $20 billion accumulating Bitcoin mining machines and burning electricity and only got to do one double spend transaction. Maybe they could do a couple double spend transactions, but either way, it's gonna be very difficult to do this as a profitable attack, simply because while you're doing this, because Bitcoin is being is suffering a 51% attack, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin on the exchanges, the price that people are willing to pay for Bitcoin is probably plummeting because everyone's scared about this attack. And so what you're basically doing is you are hurting yourself uh, in the process of trying to destroy the Bitcoin network because you own some Bitcoin and you also own these ASICs. And if you mess up Bitcoin, if you interfere with it for long enough, if you do empty block attacks, if you try to do a double spending attack, basically those ASICs that you spent the $20 billion on become worthless since they're only good for one thing, that's for mining Bitcoin. If you own $20 billion worth of, of ASICs and you're economically minded, you're probably just much better off using them to mine Bitcoin and earning it honestly. This is how the incentives work because if you destroy Bitcoin, you basically destroy your machines. How does this happen? Well, if you keep this attack going for a while, probably within a week, the Bitcoin core devs and the full notes, just as in the empty block attack, will have agreed on a new version of Bitcoin Core that routes around the attacker, either by ignoring this fraudulent chain or by running a different proof of work algorithm, maybe using something different from SHA-256. If the algorithm gets changed like this, all of a sudden, all those ASICs that you spent $20 billion on are completely worthless because ASICs, Bitcoin mining machines, can be used for only one thing, and that is running the SHA-256 algo and mining Bitcoin. So this is the problem. If you're trying to do this and profit from it and you have $20 billion worth of equipment, you do not want the Bitcoin devs, Bitcoin core devs, and the full nodes to brick your machines by creating a new mining algorithm. Again, if you try this and fail, basically you've just done a failed attack on Bitcoin. Everyone can see that and you just showed the world how unstoppable Bitcoin is. Now in yesterday's video, I talked about how the Poolin mining pool in China is currently insolvent and is refusing to give people uh, their Bitcoin that they that they own. 
I want to talk about this again in the context of a 51% attack. So go back and watch this video if you haven't seen it already. I'll link to it in the description notes below. But this is something that you will often see. People see people will show you this pie chart and they'll say, look at these Bitcoin mining pools. Here's Foundry, here's Ant Pool, here's F2 Pool, here's Binance Pool. They control more than 51% of the hash rate. They can get together and do a 51% attack on the network. And people who say this, they don't understand the difference between individual Bitcoin mining machines, ASICs as we've talked about, and mining pools. Bitcoin mining pools are made up of lots of people who are pointing their ASICs at the pool node, contributing computing power, and collecting a proportionate percentage of the mining reward, which helps to pay for their machines and pay for the electricity that they spend. And so when you see a chart like this, and people say that these pools can get together and do a 51% attack, they don't understand the difference between an individual ASIC and a mining pool. So for example, my mining machine, my ASIC might be in my garage in Colorado, but as I said yesterday, I can point it to a Beijing mining pool like Poolin and contribute hash rate and earn rewards. So if a mining pool, if I'm, if I'm mining with Poolin and they decide to try to attack Bitcoin or mine empty blocks or do a double spending attack or other kind of 51% attack, Every individual like me who likes Bitcoin, who owns Bitcoin, why else would I be running a Bitcoin mining machine in my garage? We'll just point our ASICs to another mining pool. So mining pools cannot attack Bitcoin unless individual miners agree to go along with it. Again, if you own one of these mining machines, why would you ever want to attack the Bitcoin network? ASICs can only do one thing, which is what we said, which is to mine Bitcoin. If Bitcoin dies or if the algorithm gets changed, the proof of work algorithm gets swapped out for a different one as a way of defending against one of these attacks or fighting back, your ASICs will only have scrap recovery value. So it doesn't make any sense that someone would buy Bitcoin, buy ASICs, and then try to attack Bitcoin. It's better off just using your ASICs to mine Bitcoin. And this applies not just to individuals and corporations, but also nation states. If you have $20 billion worth of ASICs, it might just make sense Unless you're trying to destroy Bitcoin, it will make economic sense to instead contribute to the hash rate, contribute to Bitcoin security, and mine Bitcoin. That's what a rational, profit-minded person or institution will do. Only nation-state level attackers, as we said, will probably not be economically minded, but they're still going to end up failing, as we talked about in those two examples, since they will eventually end up on their own chain that no one cares about. A couple more notes about 51% attacks. As I've said before, 51% attacks only take place on the tip of the blockchain, so the latest block or the latest few blocks. So if there's ever a 51% attack happening and you're a Bitcoiner, just don't do any transactions while the attack is happening. 51% attacks do not rewrite the whole chain. That would take too long. It would take too much energy to do. And while you were trying to rewrite the whole chain, the honest miners would be adding new blocks to the legitimate chain. 51% attacks cannot steal your Bitcoin from you. Basically, the worst thing that can happen is if you're a merchant during a 51% attack, let's say you sell someone a car, and then that transaction where they send you Bitcoin in exchange for the car, let's say that transaction gets omitted from future blocks because maybe the person who bought the car from you is part of the attack on Bitcoin. And so what happens is that purchase, purchaser still has his Bitcoin. He now has your car and you're out that money. That's really the worst thing that can happen. But a 51% attack cannot steal anyone's Bitcoin. And especially if you haven't transacted for a while, your transactions are buried deep, deep in the blockchain and covered with other blocks. And it'd just be too difficult to remine the entire chain. Meanwhile, the whole world is watching the Bitcoin blockchain. If there is a 51% attack taking place, Everyone will know about it. They'll be talking about it on Discord and Twitter and everywhere else. And if you're a hodler, basically you don't have to do anything. You just carry on. You just don't want to send your Bitcoin or try to receive Bitcoin during a 51% attack. You just basically wait it out. And a 51% attack, it'd be very, very unlikely if it lasted more than just a couple of days. Now, in its entire history, Bitcoin has never suffered a 51% attack. So this should tell you something that these things didn't even happen when the Bitcoin network was much smaller, when it had a much lower hash rate. But many other altcoins have suffered 51% attacks. In, in particular, Ethereum Classic has been hit by many, many 51% attacks. It's very easy to attack these smaller chains that don't have the same security and the same high hash rate. 
Bitcoin SV, BSV is another coin that's really suffered from 51% attacks, as I'll link to all, in all these articles below. Basically, what you can do is if you are a Bitcoin miner, because there's so many, uh, there's so many ASICs that mine Bitcoin, if you ever wanted to, and if you were one of these miners, you could get together and you could attack all the other SHA-256 coins. And this is indeed what has happened with BSV, with Bitcoin, uh, quote unquote, Satoshi's vision. It's not his vision at all. Uh, Bitcoin Cash as well. These are all the SHA-256. Digibyte, I don't know if it's still around, Namecoin, I'm not even sure if they're still around. But this is the risk of being in Bcash or BSV. You could easily be attacked. Something like uh, three to 5% of BTC, of Bitcoin miners, could get together and do a 51% attack on your chain. Now they're probably not gonna do that because they're too busy mining BTC. And these are failed forks, BCH, Bcash, and BSV are failed forks. But it's important to realize that Bitcoin itself has never never suffered a 51% attack. It is something that has been suffered by other proof of work coins. And this is one of the things that gives Bitcoin just this huge, huge lead that's impossible to catch up to. This is one reason that Bitcoin, that Ethereum is moving to proof of stake because they basically failed to compete with Bitcoin on the proof of work field. So they are changing fields and they're moving to a much less secure consensus mechanism called proof of stake. Something else I wanted to conclude with, something else about a possible nation state level attack or government attack on Bitcoin. It's important to remember that governments are really, really bad at tech. They're really bad at IT. The U.S. went to the moon in 1969, and we haven't been back since. The U.S. has gotten really bad at doing practical science and engineering, in particular, the U.S. government, as we saw with the, the failure of Artemis in the past week. The other example, of course, is the classic Obamacare example, where they spent $840 million on a website. It, it failed on launch day. And even before launch, they knew that it had failed the day before it, it, it couldn't even handle, the website couldn't even handle 500 users. So the US government's incompetent. It's very, very unlikely they would be able to start their own chip fab facility, build all these ASICs and attack Bitcoin. Even if they did, they would be routed around in about 24, 48, 72 hours, and they would look like complete fools. Now you may say China is much more competent. They have the semiconductor and chip fab lab capabilities. Of course, the Bitcoin hash rate used to be concentrated in China and nothing happened. There weren't 51% attacks, even when, when all those ASICs were inside of China. But, so China could try the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese government could try to launch a 51% attack on Bitcoin. They'd probably be more technically capable of doing that, especially if they uh, conquered, uh, took over Taiwan. But even then, the same uh, reverse attacks could happen where the nodes in the Bitcoin core devs could route around the fake chain, the one that has empty blocks or the chain that has these double spend transactions. So if you're going to come after Bitcoin, if you're going to try to kill Bitcoin, you better succeed. You better know what you're doing because otherwise you're going to be the laughing stock of Bitcoiners. And you're just going to demonstrate to the world how powerful Bitcoin is. So there are many things I worry about with Bitcoin. A 51% attack is not one of them. Bitcoin has matured and grown to the level where it is now impossible to take down Bitcoin with a 51% attack. All you'll do is strengthen it and make a fool of yourself in front of the world. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.